Hey everyone and welcome to this module number three. Um, I want to look over everything with you really quick, make sure you understand I, uh, what's going on. And I know that there is your horror edit that you're still working on. So as you'll see over here, went kind of quick, but module three, that's where we're moving to right now. I have moved edit to horror scene over here. Um, just if you're looking for it for the, the footage um, or uh, anything like that, again, go off of the script, read, read the script, find the shot, and then um, just edit it to the script is what I would do. And just as a reminder, some of these, um, some of these I know like uh, this one right here, this clip has more than one shot in it. Um, you can so see so weird. So we have a <laughs> wide odd. two shot, and then later on we have close ups. So just be um, aware of that. But read the script and just um, kind of like you edited to the narration um, for the eagle edit, edit to the script. Um, you know, we see down a dark hallway, and Becky's head pops up against the wall. And then go and find which of that you like. Try and again, work on building tempo, momentum, pacing. Is it fast? Is it slow? Are my cuts matching? So if I bring a left arm in, I'm in a wide shot here, and I go to a close-up, I need to find where that arm matches. And that's where I make my edit point. But if you look at this, then you know it'll make sense um, what you need to do. And that is due this pop-up. Um, that is due the 23rd. So you'll have a little more than a week from right now to do it. Um, but main thing, I moved it over into this module when you're looking for it. Um, on the student view, as far as where assignments are, um, how it's housed from a student view, I'm not sure if it necessarily matters to you, but maybe you don't have the footage yet. That's... That's where it is now. Um, I'm trying to keep it kind of simple for the next two weeks because this, for a lot of you, it sounds like first time editing. Um, I, I don't want to overwhelm you with too many projects at once. I'd rather you go slow and get it right the first time. Um, so we have one lecture. It's not very long at all on lighting. One of my favorite aspects, and I think when you see this, you'll start to see just how important lighting is to a film and to your film that you're going to be doing as well. Um, so you'll have this lecture, and then this is a little, I think, 10-minute um, tutorial on cinematic lighting, and it goes more into where to put lights to achieve the look that you're wanting. Um, so start here watching both of these, and then over in assignments, two um, rather small assignments um, for this one, you'll take um, pictures um, based on um, uh, get a high key shot, a low key shot, pictorial lighting, um, so non uh, unmotivated um, sort of a lighting scheme, uh, soft lighting, hard lighting, and a silhouette. Now, I know you don't have access necessarily to um, a lot of lighting gear. You don't have to um, do anything or get anything too crazy. Um, the only areas, I mean, any kind of light will work. I'm using right now just a, a ring light, um, which, you know, aren't tremendously expensive if you need to go get one. But you can use a lamp, anything at home. Um, to get a soft light, you can use something like curtains, like you see behind me, a white um linen sheet, uh, a board, a wall, anything where light can reflect against it. So like I can take a light, point it at that wall. So it's now, it's not on me, but the light's bouncing off the wall, hitting me now. Um, so you can just kind of get creative and it'll be good because as you're going forward and shooting your film, you'll be able to kind of create these, um, these lights in whatever way uh, you're, whatever you're trying to um, achieve. So six shots you can use your cell phone just as long as the principles are there um you know from what you learn i can see oh okay this is 
you know, soft lighting, hard lighting, things like that, that um, I want you to be able to figure out how to do. Um, the next one is lighting in a film. And you can pick any movie you want. I can give you suggestions. Um, if, you, if you don't know, for instance, The Godfather would be a great one to talk about lighting. I just want 200 to 250 words about lighting and film and anything that you notice. How is it helping tell the story? So you can say things like the dark lit room was um, a way of showing the subversive nature of the mafia. They kept the room dark throughout the film. If you look during the wedding scenes, you see that Don Corleone's office is always um, dark and they wanted to kind of keep it as a way of showing the mysteriousness, the kind of clandestine aspects of being in the mafia. How did the lighting, you know, if it was brightly lit, it'd be a lot different. Or you could say something like, the dark lit eyes on Don Corleone showed uh, a way of us not being able to get too close to him or see what his thoughts were all the time. It was like somebody wearing sunglasses. We can't see what they're thinking. Those are just examples that you can just kind of talk about what you notice. I try and avoid comedy. Like, um, you know, a Judd Apatow comedy is going to be pretty consistently, um, you know, there's, there's not much to the lighting. Not that it's not good, but it's just, you know, very broad lighting. There's not, there wouldn't be much to talk about. Um, that's not to say all comedies. I'm sure you can, can find something, but, you know, in general, like a Nicholas Sparks romance um, or a, a comedy, it's it's not going to be that, there's not going to be that much to talk about. Um, so those are your assignments. And then you'll have your hero goal obstacle film. So you're going to be shooting your first film. Um, I'm, I really want you to just have fun and enjoy the process. So I'm not going to be too nitpicky about anything. In fact, just the opposite. I'm looking for very um, minimal when it comes to grading. Um, 45 seconds to two minutes. Minimum of 45 seconds, maximum of two. Don't go over. Um, if, if you're like unsure or you're like, am I 205? I'm going to say I'm going to cap it at this because I want you to practice being a Hollywood filmmaker and when you have a runtime, that's what you need to keep it to. So two minutes. Um, and, and I don't want you doing anything too complex either. Two minutes is, is plenty. Um, 30 seconds is too short. Two minutes is too long. Um, is your edit smooth? Is, are there flash frames? Is there, I'll show you, um, what a flash frame is here in just a second. Is the audio like way too loud or way too quiet or anything like that? Is it, is it just kind of assembled in a way that I could watch it and say, yes, this is a film. And believe me, I've been doing this for long. I know when it's um, the effort's not there versus a first time, you know, filmmaker. So don't expect it to be perfect. I can tell if it's like, hey, this is an area you can, you can work on next time versus you edited this five minutes before it was due. Um, so, you know, make sure that it just it's flowing like a good film watch your match cuts um, and things like that and I want you to put a title um, with your name and you can title this whatever you want over a black screen outside of that you can get as creative um, as you as you want um, this is where you'll turn this um, in this is due on the 30th so everything in this module uh, minus the uh, Ed, the horror edit will be uh, due on the 30th. And the, the horror edit's due the 23rd. Everything else is the 30th. And again, I moved it over to this module. Um, I, I debated doing it, but I thought um, it would be the best idea. So here's your hero goal obstacle. And then just really quickly, let me show you in Premiere. So this is an example of a title at the beginning. Um, how I want you to do it. It's really easy um, to do. All you um, do is come to whatever part in the film you want. Um, if you want to start it at the beginning, you can bring your playhead right to the beginning. Click T, type T or click the T for the, the um, typing tool. And then just name, hit enter, 
title. If you need to edit it, uh, what you wrote at all. May oh, one note, whenever you're done typing, always come over and click right away because if this is down, no matter what you do, it's gonna, it's just gonna make your life really hectic to not have that. Um, but if I wanna edit anything in here, I highlight it um, and I come over to graphics and edit. Um, and then I can adjust it however you need. You can kind of play around in here and get as creative with it as you want. I can center it, um, so on and so forth. I can change the font type right here to whatever I want it to be. You'll notice over here in browse, if you kind of cycle through here, there's some stuff if you wanted to make um, something automatically, you can just drag it over. And sometimes it has little animations with it. And then you'll just, to edit it, just same thing, click over and edit up in here. Once it's highlighted, you know, you could do name. Oops, except here's probably want to spell it right. Anyway, that's how um, you'll you'll get your graphics up there. And then the other thing I talked about was balancing the audio. Okay, let's talk about audio mixing really quick. I actually had to go back and redo this because um, two issues. My uh, image was covering up what I was talking about. I kind of forgot about it. And two. Um, the software that I use OBS to screen record, um, it mixes the desktop audio with the mic into one, you can see it's one um, track instead of different ones, so I can't, <laughs> the irony Make, of talking uh, about mixing while I was mixing, so if I have things two, going and I'm talking at the same time, whatever I want it to be, it just, you'll notice it, it, it doesn't work, so um so you'll notice this is kind of where it'll end up talking about title and then I'll talk about mixing. So what do I mean by mixing? All right, let's look at the timeline and I'm hitting the tilde key. It's that button below escape um, that you use for accent marks. Um, so directly below escape and it makes a nice, um, you can do that with any of them. I can, if I click wherever I wanna go, I can hit the tilde key and it makes it bigger. But um, basically what I wanna do is theoretically your music will be on track, your dialogue will be on one track, and you want to um, you want to get it to where, look, this is my audio meter and it measures in decibels. Um, so those are your assignments and then you'll have your hero. See how I'm hitting around negative 12? That's a good place for dialogue. To film go. Obviously, uh, obviously uh, music, uh, and anything like that is going to be a little bit different. But what you can do is you can also see when I get peaks and pops as I'm doing my um, talks here. If I zoom in, I can kind of see, and I just lost where I am right here. So see, I hit it, it peaks. I can get my pen tool right here, or I can hit the letter P. This is a volume timeline. I can just sort of click and I can adjust. See right here, these this numbering will start to move. The decibels are going down. So this area will go. And then you'll just, to edit it, just same thing, click over and edit. Up and so see how the volume went up, up and down? Kind of see this might be make it a little bit more dramatic and then you'll just to edit it just same thing click over and edit so what i'm trying to find then is you'll just harmony. To edit. i'm trying to find harmony with the audio there's no there's no rule what it needs to be it's just got to be is it is it tolerable a lot of times people kind of get hung up on the audio and you know that it didn't record well so they're not sure what to do with it 
Um, but you just have to play with it, balance it. Your your music shouldn't overpower your dialogue and vice versa. You just got to find the sweet spot. Now, let's say this whole track, this whole track I want to change. I can right click, go to audio gain, and I could say um, I go up in increments of three decibels. But for the sake of this, uh, let's just do three because I can undo it. So watch, watch the waveform when I do this. Okay, it grew, it got bigger, right? Um, so it's gonna be three decibels louder. I'm gonna undo it. There you go. So if I have music underneath, and I know the entire time I don't want it very loud, I can I can play with my um, with my audio game that way. You can really kind of get into it. There's a there's a whole audio section of Premiere Pro, but because a lot of people probably might not be using it. I don't want to get too in the weeds, but if you want to learn this, I can teach you, or you can just kind of go in if you if you are using Premiere, you can if you highlight the clip that you want, you can alter your dialogue, um, you can add a edit it, just same thing, click a sweetener to it if you want, um, over and edit and make it however you want. Are the sounds coming together in a in an appealing sort of way? Does it does it does it fit? So that is um, an overview. Oh, I'm closing it down. Um, that is an overview of this module. Let me know if you have any questions or need any help, clarification, things like that. One last note um, is don't forget your film uh, journal with the example is over here under concurrent assignment. Um, don't put that off when you can. I know it'll be a little bit busier this week, but when you can, um, go ahead and start working on that. All right, hit me up. Don't wait till the last minute to ask questions. I'm always here. We can jump on Teams, whatever we need to do um, to help you get your film where it needs to be. But go out and have fun making this first film. It's a fun process to do, and I look forward to seeing the work that you create.